Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of TechView Snope. And today I am going to get into another Android coding video. Now this is not a part of the tutorial series. However, I figured that since I'm already working on this program and there's real world stuff going on with it, then why not show it off? Maybe you will learn something. Now, as far as the program on show, it's all on GitHub, so please feel free to play with the code, modify it with it, um, do whatever you want. Copy the code and put in your own stuff, whatever. And keep in mind that if you do edit and, and load it where I can actually okay it on GitHub, you'll be credited with it. It's fine. It's cool. Now, as far as that goes, if you haven't seen my tutorial series, then keep in mind that comes out once or twice a week, usually on Mondays and Thursdays. But with that being said, uh, please feel free to share this video so help out as many people as possible. So with this, let's jump on into the code itself. The application that I'm making, it, it looks bland right now because of I'm, I'm going to be working on the user interface on a later date but with this being said one of my family members recently got a used phone I was looking at it and I was, I was trying to figure out how to best test the phone the problem is is there's no real one application to download and test a bunch of things with it and I figured why not just make one so that's simply where that came from now with this being said, one thing I'm thinking about doing is advertise this towards like pawn shop owners and people who are buying phones and stuff like that, and that way they have something to actually use properly. So as far as some of the tests, what we're dealing with is screen burnout. Screen burnout is basically if you leave an image on the screen for a very, very, very long time, then what happens is the pixels will get stuck and if you have a bright especially like a bright white screen going on you can actually see like a ghost of an image so what this does is it tells you a little bit about it and then you say you understand and then it shows you this the, and that way you can see okay is there any dead pixels which would be black dots on the screen or is there any screen burnout, which would be a ghosting of an image. This happens on pretty much any device, TVs, computer monitors, to even phones. And I even have this problem on my phone. I got a used phone and the person who used it before I did, the uh, owner of it before I got it, they apparently like Facebook a lot because I can see on the very top, when it's a very, very, very bright screen as far as a white screen, you can see m.facebook.com or something like that in the browser stuff. So they liked it so much that that actually burnt in. So yeah. Now, with that being said, that's just simple one test. And a lot of these I won't be able to show you because uh, it's an emulator. But... Um, the light basically turns on the flashlight if your phone or device doesn't support it then it will tell you camera it um, it basically is looking for if your camera lens has a scratch on it then it, it just tells you a little bit and that way you can actually see okay is there like a blur on it or something like that you clean the lens and it says oh, okay that went away so there's no problem or the blur is still there and that way you can actually physically take a look at the camera lens and see if there's a scratch or something there or if it's even repairable. So with buttons and speaker mic and the accelerometer, I haven't done anything with them yet. Buttons, what I'm thinking about doing with that is you click on that and what would happen is this type of interface would come up and what would end up happening is when you're pressing the buttons, uh, home button, power button, volume, up and down button, it will actually say which button you're pressing, maybe even the menu and the back button, 
since those are now capacitive on almost all devices. And that way you know what works and what doesn't work. Simple as that. So the next thing is is the um, speaker and mic and all this is going to you press it it will record you for a few seconds and then it will play it back in the um, speaker the, the the back speaker and that way you can hear the quality of the speaker so as that and also you can test the microphone at the same time the call out function I, I got to fix the wording on all this but the call out function is basically it um, is to test the radio and test the microphones and speakers and stuff like that, and the Wi-Fi call and the regular call and stuff like that. So what happens is it simply just opens up the 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 calling application, the dial-in application, and that's simple. Now with the vibrate, I obviously won't be able to show you this because it's an emulator. But basically what would happen is whenever you press I understand, the thing will vibrate for like a second. And that way you can say, okay, it works. And if it didn't vibrate, you can say there's probably a problem there. Then when we get to GPS, what happens is um, it shows that this has GPS ability. What happens is, is basically you, if the thing says that um, you don't have a GPS or it's not on, then what would happen happening is it will alert you on the bottom. Like for example, this NFC stuff, it will alert you on the bottom like that. And um, if it detects it is on and up and running, it gives you says this app can see your GPS is on. And then um, it says, okay, if you want to test it even further, then if you got google maps installed then this will just take you to google maps and see how accurate the gps is very simple very easy then we got nfc near fail communication and when it detects that the device doesn't even have nfc it will say that or it says the nfc is off and it'll give you that notification something that simple and if it detects it's on, it'll give you like a uh, interface like this, but it'll say um, it's able to detect it. So if you want to test it any further, then please feel free to use it with another device to see how well it works. Same thing in Bluetooth. If it detects that the Bluetooth it is not even able on the given device, it will give you this message. If it detects that the Bluetooth is off, it will give you a different message. It'll say the Bluetooth is off. What? A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, if the um, if if it detects the Bluetooth is on, it'll say this device can see the Bluetooth is on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, please spare it and to test out how good it is. Whatever. I I don't know. But uh, then cellometer, I again haven't played with. I'm not even really sure if I'm going to keep this, but a cellarometer, basically what I'm thinking about doing is either having it where you can lay it on the table and it says if it's laid down, stand up, see if it takes it stand up, and from there, you go from there. Or, and I'm thinking about really, this is probably the, what's going to end up happening because it's easier on me, is you do the Check Fusion Up logo, have it go to a different activity, and the uh, they can turn the thing and see okay it works or not so yeah that's uh pretty simple now as far as this goes the code side of things i'm assuming that you've already seen some of the tutorials or you know some of the stuff already so i'm not gonna go and uh, this is a button and this is how i identify it whatever but, um, yeah, you have to identify the stuff and advise you to identify everything at once so it's easier. Then go down and um, if, if you're doing buttons and stuff like that, do on-click listener for everything. And that way you, you make on-click listener for one, copy and paste it, and just change this thing right here to whatever you have here. And that way you got an on-click listener ready to be coded for each one because you got to have that anyways. So, from here, with the 
burnout, the uh, screen burnout. How that works is um, pretty simple. Uh, whenever you click on it, it brings up the alert dialog box. It sets the title to the following, sets the message to the following, and then has the what's called a positive and negative button. Just think of it as button one, button two. One button it says I understand, the other button says cancel. Then within the activities of the buttons, this is what changes. So with the cancel button, I'm just going to have it where you press cancel, it kills that. That's that. You um, go to the other button, it says start new activity, and then kill this one. So and just to see what happens, just show you what happens, let's take this out and we'll revisit it. So when it starts the new activity, it goes on for the activity and what we have in the uh, manifest permissions and all by the way because i probably forget to show you that but um we have the theme and it says no action bar and full screen and also make it portrait so the thing cannot do auto rotate same thing with the main where it's portrait where it doesn't do auto rotate so it goes to this class and with its class what it does is it loads this layout first which is this given layout and if we go to the design we can see it and um and you, you can see that we got rid of the action bar from the manifest so we don't have to worry about that and we, we also got rid of the notification area with the manifest so we don't have to worry about that and we added a id that's the only thing that we added there next we um, go to the brightness because in order for you to see the burnout you need to have the thing as bright as possible so with here i i programmed this where one is bright it's like the, the brightest you can have it zero is the dimmest you can have it so that's uh that's fairly simple in itself then we got to identify it, and that's where this ID comes in because we want to treat the entire layout as the as a button. So if the person clicks anywhere on the layout, it takes them back. So what we have here is a relative layout. Yada yada. It identifies it. Then we have down here. Okay, if the person clicks on the layout, what happens? The person clicks on the layout. They um, it starts another activity and it kills this particular one and for kicks and, and I'm going to show you why in a bit but for kicks and whatever what happens if we have a uh, no back button I'll show you that in a second and let's save that for a uh, for a bit so let's uh, kill that off. I'm just going to cut that out and let's kill this off. Let's show what happens if I, I got to load the application in. Let's show what happens if you don't have a finish when you're switching activities and why is it important to have that finished, which kills the activity itself. So uh, I'm assuming that's already loaded. And let's go to the screen. Let's go to I understand. Let's go back. Let's go to the screen. I understand. Let's go back. So if we get the back button, it, you're going to have to hit the back button several times just to get to the home screen. And that's a major problem in itself. What's also potential to happen, and, and more realistic, what's uh, potential to happen is... Um, the the thing will actually go and um, go to one activity, then go to the other, go to one activity, then go to the other, and what would end up happening is you you have to go back between all the activities, and and you can end up ruining someone's experience, and they'll just delete the application altogether. So when you add those, add the finish. It basically kills it and it says don't come back here 
or let's go into what happens if you don't have the back button program let's uh let's add back the finish and let's load this again and let load for a second or two but basically what we're doing here is is we got to finish for the main screen but we took out the finish for the uh, the back button area you know, we, we don't even have a back button area so what's going to happen well let's check it out we go to the screen uh, and we go I understand so it goes to the second screen then we hit the back button and it goes to the home screen because you killed the first thing so now that you done that you have to actually reference the back button so now we got a back button in there let's try it again show you the importance of all this try to all right and uh, do I understand and do back button and because we told it to start a new activity and to go to this particular class and to kill this other one this this other activity we don't have to worry about that it goes where exactly we want it we don't have to worry about it going to the home screen or something else we get it to go exactly where we want and that way the user is exactly where they need to be at any given time and we got full control for that that's the importance of that so in case if you're trying to get that fix on your application it's a simple thing it's a very very simple thing and don't worry about it but feel free to copy the code it's in github now as far as the um making sure i got everything as far as the light how did that work well basically going up here so we had to do that to private camera and uh, so we can reference the stuff uh, and, and then we got to do the these permissions right here so we can use the light so so y you have permission to use the actual functions on the camera and, and the person when they're downloading the app they know exactly what it is but it's more or less if you don't have that you can't even use the stuff because Android won't let you it'll try to protect you and um, all mobile operating systems do this at least that I know of I know iOS does it and I know Android obviously does it as we see here I think Windows does that so they, I think they do that because um, some of the stuff on the Windows desktop side tries to do some of that which is kind of weird but um, with this we got a reference back to the lights and set the on click listener and then what we have here is does the thing even have a flashlight capability if it says no we need to say that it doesn't so that the person knows there's a natural problem so what happens is it has an alert dialog box that comes up and for this we have error the message and then okay as seen here and that way we can say here device doesn't even support the flashlight so stop clicking on this now let's say they click okay it, it kills it out dialog box and that's that where we have an if else statement what happens if they do have a flash ability what happens is is the thing turns the flash on and then it gives you a dialog box unfortunately i can't show you because emulators don't have this ability but on, on my phone i've tested it on my actual phone it gives you a title saying lights what you're testing i probably changed that to testing flashlight or something like that then it says your ld is on in the back and should be lighting up and then um and from there you can just say okay and then when you press ok it turns it off now this is very important because if it's not on then that means that 
the LED is messed up. The software says, I see the capability of doing it, but what happens if the LED itself is messed up? There's no way to detect it from the software side. And that's why I'm not doing a dynos because 90% of this stuff requires your eyes to actually see what's going on so you know what's going on. Because you can't diagnose screen burn. You can't diagnose this because I like my car, for example, a guy sold it and um, things said um, I didn't I didn't know about mill lights. I didn't know anything about the time. But uh, when I was in high school, same car I run now, guy sold it and he or someone before him took out the mill light, the check engine light. And apparently that was supposed to be lighting up. Well, the car's computer says it sees that. I'm not exactly sure how the car's computer works. But the car's computer says it sees that. But because the guy literally took out the LED, then, I, you know, that there it doesn't do nothing. Like, it, it'll send signal all day to it, but without that connection, it, it does nothing. Something similar can happen here where the person can drop their phone and the LED just stops working. And that's that. So, given the area, it just says, okay, and it turns it off. So, from here, what happens is this is a very important code out of all this. Well, I mean, like, all this is pretty important like that uh, to turn it off. But this is pretty important because what happens is if you don't release it, and then the person says, oh, I messed up. I, I didn't re press OK. They press the flashlight button again. What would end up happening is the app will crash because it thinks another application is using the process. So by releasing it, you do that. And usually when you, you um, deal with application, that's best practice type of thing. But that is something that you got to keep in mind is some developers don't know about that and um, and they cause havoc across the board. And, and, and that, that's a huge thing to keep in mind. Now, with that being said, you know, that's that. So we're going to call how that works it's pretty simple when a person clicks on that what happens is the alert dialog box comes up mess a uh, title message and then it gets down to positive and negative button so with this when they hit the i understand button hopefully they read a message the thing actually goes into and by the way if you want to change the wording on any of this feel free to do so i i i didn't have time to really go through a fine tooth comb and it's not on the market yet um I, i'm probably going to put it on the market just to place hold it but that way no one can screw me out of that but outside of that it's not really ready yet at all so yeah but as far as that goes, what we have here is um, when a person clicks that, we have the intent action dial, and then we have the um, intent set data URI and the telephone number, and then we have start intent, so start this. And that starts the whatever you have as a default for your phone. So if you got some third party dialer, it'll just take you there. If not, then it'll just take you to whatever. It's pretty simple. Um, I don't think I had to do an Android or a uh, permission. Yeah, I didn't have to do a permission for that. But. Um, then from there, you know, it's broker stop the dialogue when you press cancel. So vibrate, it gets a little bit more interesting. You go down to I understand portion, and you have to have the permission for the vibrate function because it's an actual hardware function. And then it's telling the thing to vibrate for 500. And what this is, is about a second. So 
this is the time it vibrates. And um, it references to uh, to this. So basically, I can have it where I think I put something to this vibrate service. So basically, what would end up happening is it knows exactly what to to cause. So, so in case if you want to add that to your app, what you need to do is add that, add that. So make sure you add this below the start activity, the uh, layout. Then um, go and add that in. What that does is that basically makes it where your um, thing will vibrate for a few seconds. And it will give you the following message. So as far as the GPS, it works pretty similar. How this works is it sees that if you even have GPS, so um, with this, you have the, the the thing will say if you even have GPS ability and if it's on, if it says it, it's good, like there's an actual GPS, then it'll give you the following. And then whenever the person says, I understand to the test, it will say this for the string. And then we have intent, browser, yada, yada, yada. And normally I don't, I mean, like, don't I actually do this for maps and stuff? Because I don't know if the person has maps installed. But what happens is, is if you got something that says, go to, like, say, for example, if I replace this with YouTube, then what would end up happening is a thing, if you got YouTube on your phone, it will ask you to start that one up. And if you told it, yeah, one time in the history of the thing, especially the newer versions of Android, what would end up happening is the thing will just go to YouTube, uh, the, the application itself, where if you said no, then it'll just go to the browser. That's, for this application, it might not be good to do that, but I don't know, it's just, it's whatever, um, it's good. The biggest thing I wanted to check is if the thing even sees that you got a GPS and if it's on. Now, if it says no, and it says your GPS is off or your device doesn't have it. Simple as that. So it does a toast notification. So example of this is, oh wait, it, the thing thinks it does have a GPS. NFC, that's different. So if NFC, it does a check. So it says, does this thing have NFC? And it says, um, I, I got a comment in right here. NFC adapter is this and is enabled. Then you do the following. And then else say the NFC is off. So example of that is right there where this emulator doesn't have NFC capabilities or a way to test it. You want to have that for an emulator. So it gives a, that toast notification, which pops up for a few seconds. The person has to read it and, and goes on. And I, I think it did cover a video on toast notifications. If not, then it will be coming out shortly because I know I was either getting into it or I was already into it. Now, Bluetooth, it works similar, but uh, slightly different. Basically what happens is Bluetooth adapter, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it says that the device doesn't even support Bluetooth, then do the following. So it says, you don't even have Bluetooth. Then what happens is, is the um, else, if it's enabled and, um, and it's off, so it's, it's not enabled, then it will say your Bluetooth is off or your device doesn't have it. And uh, for this, I, I, I don't know, um, I thought about keeping that because maybe it's, someone could potentially break it. And um, who knows? Who knows what, what can happen? But I figured it's safer than sorry type of thing by leaving that. Um, but 
saying the boost is on and enabled, then uh, what you have is the following. And it, it just basically tells you to, I, I gotta fix the this. In fact, I, I didn't even change the wording on that. Um, but basically what would end up happening is the thing will say something like, uh, this thing detects Bluetooth, pair of a uh, device to go further. Cellarometer, I haven't played with that yet. So, as you can tell, what I've done is made the on-click listeners then copy and paste the alert dialog box since all that stuff will happen. Uh, camera, as far as the, how I got the camera to work with that. Uh, oh, and the um, permissions with the Bluetooth NFC. So there's the permissions there. And as far as the camera, how that works is the same way. I already had a permissions with that out of the 40 flashlight. For this, uh, what happens is we're looking down, the person says, I understand. Then you can say the intent is to open up that and then um, start the intent now. Otherwise, kill the box itself. Now, as far as the uh, back press and stuff, I hadn't really added anything to that. One thing I was thinking about doing is um, when the person pressed the back button from here, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but maybe have it where it says, do you want to install this? I, I, I don't know because that would be kind of annoying if you want to, like say for example, if you're a pawn shop owner or something, then you might want to keep the application on I, I don't know, I don't I don't know, but um, what you can do is probably make another button and that says uninstall this app and that way the person clicks it and it says are you sure and then it'll just uninstall it whenever the uh, person says yes. So that's potential right there, but I don't know. But anyways, uh, as far as that goes, this is uh, how that works. And if you want to take a look at the code, modify it, mess with the wording, anything. Like literally, if you, if you go in and uh, mess with the wording and help out the wording and stuff, feel free to do so. And you will definitely be credited. That's how GitHub works. Um, but if you do have any questions on this or anything else, let me know. And I'll try to help you as best as I can. And please feel free to check out the tutorial series. And if you do ask questions that are blatantly on the tutorial series, I'm probably not going to answer that. So keep that one in mind. And uh, if I'm not answering your question, that means that you probably need to be watching the tutorial series. But keep in mind, I'm doing this practically for free. So be patient. But anyways, please feel free to like, subscribe, and share. Sharing is very important. But if you want to help out this channel, then please feel free to go to Patreon to donate, and that will help me out a bit. But anyways, it's been Great Bennett, founder of Check Views Nope, and I hope that this video has helped you out, and I hope you have a great day.